Uh, I will talk about the Ramsey numbers of cycles, but uh, the Galley coloring. I will tell you later what is uh, Galley coloring here. I only listed my students' name here because it's really my students got me interested in this project. And Dylan Bruce was an undergrad student. We, he desperate, desperately needed an uh, uh, honest project, so I picked this topic. <coughs> then I was too excited, and I got my two students involved. We want to solve for all the for all cycles. And the Fang Fang Zhang was a PhD, is a PhD student from Nanjing University, and he visited me for supposed to be one and a half year as a joint student, but he, she only stayed for uh, 13 months because I'm a sabbatical leave. Now she's back to China. Okay. <laughs> but she's good. She will be on the market next year. Okay. <laughs> Both Jimmy and the Fang Fang graduated. And, uh, Christian will work for the government. I won't say yes. <laughs> okay, let me get started. So, oops. This way. Okay, now works. Uh, everybody remembers such as talk, right? So today you will see quizzes today <laughs> for such as talk. Such as mentioned this one, so I want to mention it. And we know six is best possible. You cannot do fewer than uh, six. So only you remember this picture. Okay, we will refer to this picture many times during the talk. Okay. And uh, intuitively speaking, what does it say about the Ramsey theory? It means every very large system contains a very large, very well-behaved subsystem, and which means complete disorder is impossible. If you want to know how large this can be, we need to be specific to give you the definition of uh, Ramsey numbers. And uh, for this talk, you only need to know these guys. Okay. PA pass I n vertices, psych I n vertices, and the complete graph I n vertices here. And uh, we use the standard notation here whenever we talk about the Ramsey numbers. So K arrows H1 through HK means no matter how you color the edges of the complete graph I n vertices with K colors, you have to see a monochromatic copy of a subgraph HI for some color I. And uh, this uh, the previous example shows you that K6 arrows K3, K3, and, but the K5 does not. Okay. And uh, we use this standard notation here to for Ramsey numbers. So minimum number of n so that this arrow function holds. Okay, the arrow holds here. And now Ramsey uh, proved back in 1930s this number always exists. <laughs> Give any graph you have here always exists. Okay, now you know the definition here. Everybody knows now, right? Now here is the first quiz problem. How do you use Ramsey number? Okay, the existence of Ramsey number to prove Shure theorem back in 1916. Okay, he did. He didn't have Ramsey number, right? How do you prove this one? Just for fun. Okay, so let me show you. I should spoil the fun. I think you know how it works. Let me show you here. So this is your ground set. And it's given a coloring. Let's call it Q1, K, a C1, 2K. I use K colors to color the ground set, right? C1 is given. So I try to now I take a here to be at least a K3. Okay, take a to be at least this one. So I construct a complete graph here with the vertex set is exactly the ground set. Right? And you can add one more. This should work. This is what the this should be, should be fine. Yeah. It's three or three. Let's see. Okay, we have this one. Now you uh, define uh, each coloring of this one. Induced by this. 
this works. Okay? How do I color this one? Now, for any age, because the vertex set are integers, right? This forms an age. So this age is, sorry, let me use it, right, C2. Acting on this one, I need to use the coloring I had. Uh, that's given. What do I do? So I use I minus J. I minus J may be negative. Right. Naturally, you put an absolute value here, C1. Then you are done, right? Because by Ramsey number, you must have a monochromatic triangle. Let's say color the one, okay? With three vertices, I, J, K. You can assume I less than J less than K. Now you know how to find your three numbers. Take the difference, right? So you have it, right? So I thought this would be a fun quiz, right? <laughs> it's a nice application. You may say, did I say distinct integers? Then you need to replace 3 by 3 plus 1. Uh, I don't want to. Oh, true. True. I shouldn't do that one. Okay. Uh, so why do we do this one here? And oops, because this leads you to uh, use the, this one was used to show that Fermat's last theorem is false if you are leaving the uh, sufficiently large prime. The, the finite field the ZP here when P is a large prime number. Okay, you can prove this one would have a solution. Okay, I'll come back to this exam later. I thought I did it in head. I thought it's so true. <laughs> okay. So let's see here. Now for this one, what about the upper bond here? I only care about the diagonal one and the two color. Just give you some flavor here. Now the first one is a trivial upper bond. A simple pigeonhole principle argument would give you this upper bond, right? The first non-trivial one here can in 1935 uh, by Eldish and Zekers here. Uh, uh, the, I will mention the improvement for this one later. Yeah. My focus is on the other one, not on, I just want to tell you some stories. Now what about the lower bond? Now to answer this one, Eldish established the probabilistic method, right? So I want to show you the proof here. You know how this is the standard proof normally we have. The question remains in here is, no one knows how to construct the one specifically for the lower bond. We only have probabilistic construction here. Now, another question, of course, to determine the exact value of Ramsey numbers, right? Ramsey numbers. Uh, so we know for Case, this is a, seems to me the most cited result, even for Hardwick's conjecture, when alpha equals two, this result. And by uh, Johan Kim here. And uh, the next breakthrough for the upper bond is due to David Cohen. This one was published in Annals of Mathematics. And uh, there is some breakthrough in between, but I only listed here for uh, some information. Okay, this is for, now, what, uh, Ramsey, now for what kind of complete graphs, the two color, the Ramsey numbers are new? It, it, it is quite a depressing in a way. That's all we know. For two color, the uh, complete graphs. We only know K3, K3, K4, K4. For even K5, 5, we don't know. But however, whenever we mention this one, we have to mention the anecdote of Eldish, right? Everyone knows this one? Good. So, so you knew this story, right? So I'm going to skip. Okay? The lower one now is 43. The record now is 43. The 
up on the record dropped by when? Uh, two years ago, from 49 to 48 now. Goes from 49 to 48, it published in Journal of Graph Theory. A computer assisted the proof there. Uh, but it's widely believed that the lower bound is the right number. Now we will come back to this conjecture later. Uh, for three colors, that's all we know. Okay, that's all we know. Now, what about the cycles? Good news here is all two color the Ramsey numbers of cycles, including the mixed ones, non diagonal ones, are only for two color ones. And the three color ones here, the exact number here, and now all the way up to here. So from here, I hope you are convinced. Uh, determine, uh, computing Ramsey numbers is notoriously difficult problem in kinematics. Uh, however, for cycles, uh, for all the cycles, even though we don't know exactly the number, there is a conjecture in the literature. So let me show you here. It's called the bonny eldish conjecture for all the cycles. Now, how do you establish a lower bond, right? If I give you only one color, the best thing you can do is take complete graph on two n vertices. My cycle has two n plus one vertices. It's an order cycle. If you have two colors, what do you do? If you have two colors, you take two copies of whatever you have. The second color, you color all the edges running between color red. Now, you cannot find an order cycle because of the one you built. If you look at the red graph, it's a bike tight, right? It's a bike tight. You cannot have one. And for three color, you do the same. Take two copies of the one you constructed, a color all the edges running between. And because bike tight, this is the best thing you can do. You can keep going this way, you find your lower bond. This construction is due to bonding and edge. In their paper, you only see three colors, but the same idea follows here. And they conjectured this lower bound is the right number. Okay, was conjectured in 1973. When K3, this conjecture is more popular. It's called the triple order cycle conjecture. There's been a lot of work on this one. The first breakthrough here came when regularity lemma becomes popular. Okay, so Luchdek, I don't know if I pronounced his name correctly. It showed this triple order cycle conjecture is true as in the article. Then, uh, six years later, uh, Kukukawa, Staminovich, and Skugo here announced it's true for when N is large. The most interesting development is the recent one. Okay, it's the recent one. Jason and Skugo showed if you fix K, non if number of colors is fixed, you let the cycle length here go as large as you want. Now, this conjecture is true. However, uh, Nicholas Day and Johnson showed that this conjecture is false. If you fix the letter, the N fixed, but the letter K be arbitrary, then this conjecture. They have a nice construction there. I, I only took the bond. I didn't read a, haven't read a lot of papers on the to-do list. Okay, for they constructed it in this way. Okay, so for this case, we don't know exactly what is this one. That's the story for all the cycles. Now, how about the even cycles? So it's not a surprise for you to see even the Ramsey numbers of even cycles behave rather differently than the Ramsey number of all the cycles. One possible reason is. Even cycles are bipartite graphs. All the cycles are not. Right? Now, for even cycles, we don't have a conjecture in this literature here. However, for three colored ones, you have one. <laughs> so, how do you determine three colored Ramsey number for even cycles? How do you build up a, a construction on the lower bound? So, you can. You can do the following. The construction is due to Zydo, Nowicki, and Zuka here. Start with K4. 
You take a property coloring of K4, which means each color class is a perfect matching here, right? Two, two edges. Now pick your favorite color. Normally for my seminar, the UCF, I would say, the colors I pick here has nothing to do with politics. OK, so suppose blue is your favorite color. What do you do? You blew up each vertex by a click on uh, a minus one vertices. Color them all blue, all the edges blue. Now in this graph here, you don't see an even cycle here with three colors. You can actually do more. The previous construction here, I think uh, Bonnie Eddish also had in their proof. They added a three more. You can add a three more here. And this doesn't give you an even cycle of length C to N. So they conjecture this bond uh, for N is the right answer. And this is a, now this is proved to be true when N is large enough, for N sufficiently large. They do provide a lower bond here for the construction of even cycles C to N. Now from this Construction, when I prepared this talk, I was curious, is it possible this number is always linear in K? The answer actually is no. And they, uh, they proved it's K, uh, even for C4, it's K squared plus 2. Okay. So for even cycles, uh, when K is uh, large, for multiple colors, it will be still uh, on your here. Now, since uh, calculating uh, Ramsey numbers is harder, we want to find something doable, right? <laughs> Very often, we try to forbid, forbid something. So the thing we were wondering here, now Bonnie Eldridge conjecture is so nice. Would it be true under certain conditions? Under what condition this conjecture would still be true? So the one we want to forbid here is called the Rambo triangle. So a rainbow triangle is a triangle where all edges are colored differently. And we call a gallery coloring here. So for this talk, all coloring means color the edges of a complete graph. Okay, we only deal with complete graph and a color is edges here. Uh, a gallery coloring is a coloring of the edges of a complete graph with no rainbow triangles. And a gallery K coloring means I use at most the K colors. That's the definition. And uh, now, naturally, you can just copy paste what I defined a mobile nagu and uh, add a galley on top of the arrow, right? And the uh, galley condition, I ask the same question, right? Everything now is defined uh, in this way. So, my question now is if aliens decided to invade the Earth again, are we better off now on the gallery coloring? Yeah, if uh, aliens are demanding gallery Ramsey numbers of K5, K5, can we do it quickly? What do you think? The answer will be no. Who said no? Why no? <laughs> the answer is no because they're the same. Those two colors, no matter how you color, you never, you can never create a rainbow triangle, right? Still no. For two color, the with two color, they are the same. But when K is at least three, it's a natural lower bound. That's why I mentioned that story there. Just for Okay, now you knew the definitions. This time I will give you a quiz, I promise there won't be a boring argument. Okay. So tell me, okay, I, I need to tell you a little bit of why we forbid a rainbow triangle. The reason is because of Gallus structure result. Uh, this result, you cannot find it because it's uh, on information side. I don't know what exactly he did on the information side. This was translated by Gaiafas to the graph theory language. Now, what does it say? So I'll give you a complete graph, 
and the edges are colored with a garlic color, garlic colored with no rainbow triangles. It gives you a partition of the vertices of the complete graph. Well, into parts, each part, how large each part should be, you have no clue. But I knew I have at least the two parts. If you pick any two parts out, all the edges running between them are monochromatic, colored by the same color. And among the parts here, edges running between different parts, you only see two colors, at most the two colors. What does it mean? So you take a garlic partition, you contract each part into a single vertex. You get a, at most a two-colored graph, right? A two, we call it a reduced graph R here. Now, if the reduced graph R has a monochromatic copy of H, then my original graph must have one, right? So later on, you won't be surprised. A lot of conjectures here. We have two colored Ramsey number involved. And that's why I picked to do cycles, because two colored Ramsey numbers of cycles are all me. So I can start with three colors. OK, three colors. OK, now, what's the, uh, for Ram, a uh, Gala Ramsey, we call it a Gala Ramsey, not everyone call it a Gala Ramsey. Now, someone tried to call it a Ramsey Gala number. We just used GR to denote it. We didn't call it a Gala Ramsey in our paper, but uh, for the talk purpose, I do uh, say it a uh, Gala Ramsey here. Uh, the general behavior of this one uh, has been uh, proved by uh, Garafas, uh, Sarkozy, Sebo, and uh, They'll go here. So which, if H is not a bipedal, the, the galler Ramsey number is exponential in K. If it's bipedal, but not a star, it's a linear in K. Uh, star, you can do it quickly. Okay. Now, what do you mean we do it quickly? Now, you can tell me here, what's the galler Ramsey number of P3? P3 means I pass on three vertices. Should it be linear in K, right? So, what's a lower bound? Yes. So you start with two vertices, <laughs> right? Not enough. Not enough. No matter how color, you can never get one. However, three is enough, right? You have only two ways to color this, this guy. Either you get a monochromatic one or you get a rainbow. A three here, because the rainbow is forbidden, you must have this one, right? So three is enough. Are you convinced? Do you tell me Galen Ramsey numbers of graph is super easy, right? Let's try another one. This is a P3. How about the C3? I only What do you think? <laughs> right? How big it would be this one now? You know this now is, a, is no longer bipedite. Would it be, you are expecting exponential in K, right? Would a two to the K be enough? Or three to the K be enough? Let's say, I only have three vertices, right? Okay, two. Now you knew the construction I had for all the cycles, right? <laughs> if you let a little n be one, you get a construction b two to the k. You know dual bond has to be at least two to the k. But the unit two to the k is way not enough. Way not enough. Now to answer this one, let's record the definition of Ramsey number one more time. Okay? If I let n be an integer strictly less than this one, what does it? A coloring, right? So that you take the ending. T is a three. This is exactly bronze question. Okay, from 1983. He asks you, what's the largest number of vertices you can have? Well, 
you can have a coloring. Every triangle here, you don't see a monochrom uh, you don't see a monochromatic triangle, you don't see a rainbow triangle, which means you look at every triangle, you have to see every triangle has to see exactly two colors. Right? Has to see exactly two colors. Now from this definition you can see here, uh, this number here is exactly Galley Ramsey number, right? Of K3. Now I change the C3 to K3 because it behaves differently from all the cycles later on. Okay, it belongs to the complete graph here. Now, how do we construct this one? With two colors, to determine f of k, with two colors, the best thing you can do is on five vertices. Because if I go one more, I have to see a monochromatic triangle, right? So five is the best thing I can do. What if I have four colors? Because even order goes differently. Okay? If I have four colors, what do I do? You can imagine when k is even, gk minus 2 is already constructed. For the two new colors I introduced, I call it red blue. Right? I draw this picture one more time. Now I blue each vertex up and replace it by gk minus 2. Now in this construction, you, every triangle here sees exactly two colors. Right? Sees exactly two colors. Now if k is odd, all you have to take two copies and color all the edges running between them, the new color you are given. And from this, constru this construction here tells you this, the lower bound of f of k. And this construction is due to uh, Chang and Graham. They solved this problem uh, in 1983. At that time, we don't have Galilean Ramsey numbers of graphs. Yeah, they answered the uh, bronze question here. And uh, you can now use Galilean's theorem to give a new and a shorter proof of this result. So for that's for K3. We do have a conjecture here for complete graphs and the color coloring here. And now you can follow exactly the construction I showed you a moment ago for any KT. And they behave. So for the K3, I take two copies. Now you can take T minus one copies of this one. Uh, this conjecture is due to uh, Fox, Green, Shippa, and the Jonas Pack here for this one. For this conjecture, now we know t equals 3 is new, and uh, t equals 4 was solved uh, in 2017. I think the paper accepted for a publication now. So the interesting part here is when for k5, uh, in March 2018, we attended a conference. English Mir find a construction on uh, 169 uh, vertices. You don't see a uh, rainbow triangle, you don't see monochromatic K5. You find uh, this construction. So this construction tells you that if RK5, K5, if the lower bound for RK5, K5 is the right answer for, is the correct answer here, then this conjecture would be false. Okay, so these edits are more, uh, more interesting to the RK5, K5 now. Uh, so they, they, for T equals 5, uh, called Magnet and the English Mirror, they did put a paper on archive. The paper is about 40 pages long. I haven't got a chance to look. But the proof is relies on the Ramsey number, uh, two Ramsey number of K5 here. If it's 43, what do you have? If it's not 43, what do you have? Yeah. So, uh, so this is the one. This can have, so that's why I still put it open for P at least five here. That's for complete graphs. So we have this conjecture here. So our goal here is try to prove, to determine the Galileo Ramsey numbers of cycles. Once you get the even cycles, you get a pass for free. Okay. 
So I added this one here. Now what about uh, all the cycles? So now I'm back to the Galen Ramsey number now for all the cycles. The construction I showed you a moment ago has no Ramu triangles at all. So you have it here for uh, Galen Ramsey numbers. So same construction here. So we would like to prove the lower bound here is also the upper bound. Let me. So uh, in 2014, uh, this four here has proved an upper bound like this for Galen Ramsey of all the cycles. Then you see the uh, development here on all the cycle. But for small cycles, uh, what's new here is this one. So what got me interested here is uh, Carter Mackinnon showed me a proof of this one. I think at least twice. I fully understand the proof. So I picked the C7 for Dylan to work on for the owner's project. Then I was too excited, you can see here. Then Christian had a baby in July, and that's why this one got the delayed. Then Fan Fan told me he will come to work with me. So I also introduced the Fan Fan to this project. And we had a, we announced a approval for all the cycles at the end of July. I gave a talk in China and announced this result. So this would tell you here, the bonnie Erdish conjecture is true, and the Galley coloring here. Here I want to point out, uh, these five people here put a, a paper on archive, and I claim the same result. All five of them attended the same conference, where I give a talk, and uh, the three of them I knew for sure in the audience, and I talked to them for these two multiple times. But they never mentioned our paper in, in their archive paper. So which leaves, no, I have only less than three days to write this paper. So I put a proof on archive. But the ones I think we knew, kind of knew we have a way to solve even cycles. I uh, didn't submit this one for public waiting for the even cycles, but now it's done. Okay. Uh, so that's the story for all the cycles. To prove, to determine the Galen Ramsey number of all the cycles, uh, we have to use, we actually do use the Galen Ramsey numbers of even cycles. Okay, for even cycles. Now, what are the stories here for uh, even cycles? For the construction for in, uh, even cycles are different from all the cycles here. So, if I give you one color, what you can do? You take a a complete graph on 2a minus 1 vertices, color them all blue, let's say. For the next one here, you attach a complete graph on n minus 1 vertices, color everything inside the red, and all the edges run between them red. Because once again, the colors I try to put here, this part is by tight. You have to, you, you can, the longest even cycle you can find is a C is of less 2a minus 2. And you keep going in this way. And then that's how you get your lower bound construction there. Now this time, you see, when we uh, determine the Galen number of all the cycles, we are very rich in terms of number of vertices. We have exponentially many. Now for this one, we only have a linearly many here. So these are the stories for even cycles before we completely solve it. So. Uh, Jimmy was working on this one, however, I thought if I mix even cycles with path, I can find a solution because I never worked with uh, Ramsey numbers before. These were all new to me. Apparently, that's the wrong strategy we try to follow. We, once you hit C12, you know this method is wrong because the proof gets really, really not the way you want it. And uh, then, so once we, when we did uh, finish the proof of all the cycles, we roughly know how to do even cycles now. So with Fan Fan here, and uh, I forgot to mention Fan Fan's advisor. Uh, yeah, Yao Jing Chen is a professor at the Nanjing University. So for even cycles, now we complete, 
We didn't use the strategy we had here, and we solved this one for all now. Now, once you knew the Galen Ramsey numbers for even cycles, and you get the for pass or matching if you are looking for. Okay. So now I want to show you roughly how we prove uh, this one. Okay. So I hope. now. I want to tell you slightly how we prove even cycles. Now, to prove even cycles, to prove this one directly is very, I mean, not, e not easy. So what do we do here is we introduce the, this ingredient. So I'm going to use a G tau, this pair here, to denote a color K color, the complete graph, because I'm going to use recoloring strategy. Each time I get a different coloring, so I can refer to this one uh, easily. So what I need here is, for the colors here, I put all the, it's like you have an edge coloring. You look at the spanning graph. It says now it's the color class you have. That's how GI is defined. Now for these uh, GIs here, I only care about those who has a component, who has a larger component. The larger component I need here is a component of order at least n. That's what I need. Now from Galles uh, theorem here, this, uh, Q, this Q tau here is at least one. I must have one there. But at most the K, K is the number of colors I used, okay? So we, this strategy here, was not invented by us. So we went back to their paper here. They actually used it in their paper, okay? And uh, the, this bond here is 3n. It's 3n instead of n plus 1. But this bond tells you here, only those colors here are important to you. So you will see a lot of noises there, okay? So with this uh, notation here, if you can prove this stronger version here, then you get the version for Ramsey, a uh, Galilean Ramsey number of even cycles, because this is at most the k. And uh, a minus one times k times uh, plus n plus one is exactly the lower bound I had. Then I'm done for even cycles. Now I want to show you here, if this is true, how do you prove for all the cycles? We used this one for our other cycles. So here, oh, for all the cycles here, the lower one the construction says I have n times 2 to the k plus 1 n, right? I want to prove this is also the upper bound. So what do I do? So I take a complete graph on these many vertices here. Now suppose I don't have one. I, because suppose I have a coloring here, the uh, color K coloring, let me give me a monochromatic copy of C2N plus 1. So among all these ones, I pick a one with K minimum, which means all colors must be used, right? All colors must be used. Because color the Ramsey numbers of cycles are all new, so I can assume I have at least three colors. Okay, three colors. So the question now, how do I use Galles structure theorem? So Galles uh, partition, uh, theorem is uh, is very useful. However, every partition is useful. So how do I take care of the bad ones? Especially if I have a partition with only two parts. One is tiny. It's very hard to deal with this one. So I try to remove this one away. Originally, this one, I said I put it in the uh, trash can. Uh, Christian rejected it. He said, uh, Dr. So let's be green because uh, we do have to recycle them later on. Okay, that's why we changed it to uh, recycle bit here. Um, so you, it's like you take a garlic partition. It's better you take one straight away. Okay, and uh, it's possible in the process some of them you see the same color, you can combine them in a way. So in a way here, like X1 is the one which sends all the, sees all the red edges to the remaining of the graph, okay? And you keep going, keep going until you cannot do it anymore. Now it's possible, 
I put a K here because it's possible. If some of them, there is no one could have. I just pick them here as large as possible, but uh, this recycle bin does have a limit here. You cannot put on more than K plus one times n many vertices in this one. Okay. Now, once I have this one down here, now I look at a value partition of G deleting the vertices I put in the recycle bin here. Now, for this one, you can see here, for each color class, for each XI, it cannot be big. I will not show you this part because it would. So each part cannot be big. And uh, I have five minutes. Okay. Okay, five to ten. Okay. <laughs> okay, I thought it was. Okay, so let me uh, show you here. Give you an overview of uh, what do we have here. So these are the ones I put in the recycle bin. Each one is in group, right, according to the colors. Now, I take a garlic partition. I pick the largest one out. Pick the largest one out. Now I group the remaining of them according to the colors they send to VP. So I have now these two parts. So I have these two parts here. So once I'm done with C7, I pretty much know I have this structure, what I need to look for here. The very difficult part here is this part. I don't have a proof for this one. Okay. So for just to yeah, show you quickly here, how do I? OK, so this is my x. So this is vp. So I have a b of g here. Uh, B of G. Roughly tell you the idea. So if this one here is at least n plus one, this at least n plus one, and this one is at least n plus one, and then you knew here I don't, I cannot see no red edges, and this one no red edges and no blue. And this one no blue. If I have a red edge here, I see that I get an odd cycle. Right? So this one, by minimality, this part, I can bond this part. This is n times 2 to the k minus 2. Right? It's for this one. Now, how do I bond this? This one now is for this one here n plus 1, n plus 1. If you use this one here, this is only n times 2 to the k minus 1, n times 2 to the k minus 1. So any together would be way more than the vertices you could have. OK, you may have here. So for this is, uh, what did I group? Uh, okay, I forgot. Yeah, but this one I shouldn't use this. So this one here, I cannot. This one no red, which means everything here between parts, every between thing between parts has to be blue. How many vertices can I have on blue? Is at most the two n. So this one here is at most the two n. Why? If I have more than Two n vertices means I have at least the three parts. I have at least the three parts. And edges running between them are all colored blue. Right? You can imagine I take everything out, it becomes a complete multiparted graph. Using Bonnet's theorem, it's pancyclic. I can take any cycle I want. Okay. So at most the two n, this is at most the two n. And I knew my x here is at most. Uh, and this one I have no, cannot send a red, I cannot send a blue. It's k minus 2 uh, times a minus 1. So adding up, I get a contradiction when k is at least 4. When k is 3 means everything here has to be green, the third color. 
So you see a contradiction. Roughly, I knew what I'm looking for. But the two shoe, uh, this, the last two parts, it takes some energy. We find a recoloring method too. Uh, we didn't use any fancy tools. Didn't use any fancy tools at all. So roughly, you know what you are looking for. And I want to show you how we did this one by using uh, the structures of uh, white cytographs. So for even cycles, it's the same. So it's it's the same here, same strategy, but uh, way more complicated. Okay, way more complicated than this one. I only for all the cycles, I I apply the rules for all colors. So for even ones, you cannot anymore. You only pay attention to those who, which is, uh, which has a component of order at least n. Okay, at least n. So you do it in this way here. So eventually we can manage to show I only have two colors which are important to me. The rest of them are all noises. Which we know why. They are all tiny ones. Each they are living in the garlic partition part. They are tiny, but you cannot get rid of. Them. So we manage to show here. You can assume you have exactly two such colors, and you have only three colors in total. Only three colors in total. The thing is, how many vertices do you have? You only have three and minus one vertices, which is exactly two color the Ramsey number you have. Now you are, it's like you prove the same thing, but you have three colors. So how can we do that? Now because now you we want to say here it's because of color partition. We have these little pieces. You you know you have a lot of colors guaranteed between two parts they color the same. And we actually uh, this one here use a lot of uh, structure result for bipartite graphs. So we know we have a cycle of length 2a minus 2, we try to extend. How do we extend that? And uh, a lot of effort were paid on this, on this part. I just list a little bit of uh, the structure result we had. They had this result in their paper. However, this minus 1 here is quite annoying. If they use their same proof, you can uh, get a, you can get rid of this negative one, however, you only pay little price because in our proof, we can easily guarantee these conditions. Okay, we can easily guarantee this condition. And then we also have paths, a lot of paths there to use. Okay, so let me uh, quickly make it here. This is the mixed version. And uh, uh, when we got me, uh, I visited the University of Mississippi because uh, Bing Wei was interested on the wheels. I didn't pay too much, uh, I didn't spend uh, too much time on this one because two colored Ramsey numbers of wheels are far away from the um, I only be able to come up with the uh, even wheels, which means you have uh, k plus one vertices here. So this one I can know if I, in the blue up process, if I see a monochromatic triangle, I would see a wheel. I call it the even wheel, right? In the uh, in the my blow up process, if you see a rainbow uh, monochromatic triangle, you should you should be, you should see an even wheel. So that's why I knew five is the base. However, for all the wheel, uh, I don't know the base yet. I know the base is at least 11. It's between 11 and 16 or 18, but I don't know the, the base. Okay, then I think that's all.